All right. So at this point, what we've done is we've gotten all of our data from our logical design into our Excel spreadsheet, formatted exactly how we want it. So the next step is we're going to fire up SQL Server 2008 and use it to create our tables, put some data into our tables, and from all of that, script statements to recreate our database. So I'm going to go ahead and start SQL Server 2008 Management Studio. And this is available um, through the school's website. You can get it through eAcademy, the Academic Alliance. Um, just go to the department website, and you should be able to find a way to get to it. It's free software. You can download it from your computer as long as you're a student here at the university. So I'm go ahead and click Connect. I'm using Windows Authentication just because this is my machine. I'm going to go ahead and delete my current sandbox database so I can show you guys how to redo it. And sandbox is just the name of a database I use. Uh, you'll have a couple of these by default. I believe it's these four. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into our databases on this left side. This is just our database explorer. Right click and select new database. I'm going to call this one sandbox again. I'm just going to leave all the default settings. Go ahead and click OK. Uh, by default it sets me as the owner. So right here We've got a new database, and this is going to be our sandbox. This is going to be the one we're playing around with today, and we're going to create our data from. And so I'm going to go ahead and open this guy up, and I've got a tables folder right here. Now it's got system tables, but that's not what we're looking for. I'm going to right click tables and tell it new table. And notice over here in this right hand side, what it's given me is my table design view. So I'm going to go ahead, and based on my logical design, I'm going to begin creating tables. And so I've got owner ID, which of course was, uh, excuse me, O and then uh, immediately followed by up to four characters. So it would be O0001 or O whatever. Uh, F name. I'm just going to go through these real fast. You know, like I said, you should have these in your logical design. Street is 50. Oh, I don't know what just happened. And it's really important that you make these large enough to house in your database because if you create these fields smaller than your largest entries right now in your database spreadsheet it's going to cause you some problems because not everything will copy and paste then you'll either have to redo it and recopy and paste everything or try and find the one or two that were too big either way it's not a fun experience so just go ahead and put the rest of these in and I did phone number as a character just because it includes the parentheses around the area code and a dash between the middle three and last four digits of the phone number. I didn't feel like sifting through that and pulling it out as an integer. There's no queries I need to run that require that. So I just left phone as a character in my Excel spreadsheet. So I've got all of these. Notice I don't allow nulls on any of them. That's just the way my database is set up. I'm going to right click on owner and I'm going to say set as primary key. And then I'm going to go ahead and push Control S to save that. It's going to ask me for a name, and I'm going to call the name for my table owner and click OK. All right. Now, one thing you might have to do is if I do this and I come back and I go, oh, well, I wanted to allow nulls in street and try to resave it, it may not let you. One thing you have to enable is if I go up to here, Tools and Options, I'm going to go to Designers right here on this left-hand side. And uh, this box, Prevent Saving Changes That Require Table Recreation, is checked by default. I went ahead and unchecked that because I don't edit tables once I've got data in them, um, which is what this really is trying to prevent you from doing. And so I leave that unchecked. While you're working with your tables, you may want to go ahead and uncheck this because most of the changes like resetting primary keys or foreign keys or stuff like that is going to require table recreation through SQL Server and so it, it'll give you an error message and tell you that it won't do a certain step because it would require table recreation and the way to fix that is to just come in here and uncheck that box so once you actually have data 
in your table, I would either check that box or be sure not to alter my table anymore because you can really end up in a world of hurt if you try to do some table recreation and not all your data gets back in or some of it gets back in incorrectly. So just be aware of that as you're messing with your tables. So right now I've got my DB owner table and uh, it puts this DBO in front of it just by default. You can still reference it as the owner table. And notice I've got all of my columns right there just like I want them. And so I can come up here and select new query and this is just like my SQL plus command window. I can say select all from owner and I can execute that query by pushing F5, it's a keyboard shortcut, or I can come up here and click the execute button. And notice it returned all of my columns and right now it's blank. Well, we don't want to leave it blank, so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and put some data into it. So I'm going to right click on DBO owner and say edit top 200 rows and click on that. So right now we're blank, but we have all our columns here, and this is the dialog we need to be able to copy and paste. So I'm going to fire up my Excel spreadsheet, and this is just a copy of my master data. It's not all of my data. It's just a small portion of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of the data for my owner table. Now, notice once again that this is formatted exactly the same. I have owner ID, F name, L name, street, city, state, zip phone. They're all in the same order, all formatted correctly. It's very important that everything matches. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems. So I'm going to control shift N to select. Oh, wow, that's not how far I wanted to go. So we're just going to click and drag this guy. We're going to do it old school. And as you can see, there is a lot of data. And this is only a portion of it. For time purposes, I didn't want to be sitting here watching this thing copy and paste for five minutes. So this is not all of them I had. This is a scaled down version. So once I've selected the correct range, all of my all of my data, I'm going to copy that out of Microsoft Excel. Then I'm going to select this top left box right here, and that's going to select all of my rows and columns. And then I'm just going to paste that in using Control V, and it's going to start working. And as you can see by this little box over here on the side getting smaller, we're starting to get some data in there. And so it's going to run for a little while and uh, just sit back, let that run. It's usually a little bit faster than this, but uh, we are recording video, so it tends to slow the computer down. So while we're waiting, how about a joke? What do you call a fly without wings? A walk! <laughs> how you get it? Because. You know, when he has wings, he flies, so without wings, he has to walk. You know it's funny. You know it's funny. So, anyway, just be glad we're not doing this by hand. Computer can do stuff like this a lot faster than we could. Alright, I believe we're done. So, my little circle time indicator, whatever you want to call it, has gone away. And I can come in here and I can see I have all 1615 of the records I copied and pasted into here in my table. So I can go ahead and close that. I'm going to come over here to my query and I'm going to execute it again using F5. And there you go. I've got 1614 rows, which is actually the correct number because if we opened up this, I could show you. Um, well, we don't have the 200 in, in there anymore, but when you copy and paste, what it's going to do when you bring up this edit, it automatically adds this blank row at the bottom where you can add another. So we had 1615 because we had this little extra guy sitting down here at the bottom. So 1614 is the correct number of rows, and obviously you're going to want to check that with your Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to come over here. Hey, 1615 minus the one header line up at the top is 1614 so that is in fact the correct number of rows and as you can see it inserted them for us and they're all formatted all nice and beautiful just the way we want them and so that's a quick tutorial on how to copy and paste your data this makes it super easy once you've got it in the excel spreadsheet it's just control c control v way better than trying to mess with you know a comma delimited file or whatever other method you want to try. So that's how to get it from the Excel spreadsheet in the SQL Server.